we're able to pay off the church debt and whatever it is, and we thank you. And as we're in the Christmas season, we thank you for the month of December. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. fix the technology okay oh
Now, Christmas, the season, the time is all about joy, goodwill to our brothers and sisters, men, man and female, getting together, time, the gift of giving, time of fun, the time of sharing. But sometimes those thoughts become crazy in the Christmas rush. How many of you guys have already shopped for your Christmas gifts already? Yep, you're done. Good for you. Halfway? I'm about three-fourths of the way done myself. So I'm getting there. And my bedroom is piling up. My daughter said, hey, are you going to wrap that? And I'm like, just wait. I just got my Christmas tree yesterday set up. Not excited about that. My wife, she's not here. Okay. Don't tell her, but I'll explain a little bit. I just want to make sure she's not here. My wife, she stinks. She wants a fake Christmas tree. I don't want one of those. I have the tradition of having a real Christmas tree, and that's my way. They smell good, but she does not like to clean up all the pines that fall. So it saves money, right? If you could reuse your tree, $200, $300 for a good quality used tree. Now, if you buy a real tree that I bought yesterday, it was about $80, six, five to six feet tall. It's a pretty tree. For one time, right, yeah, $80, and then you throw it away. My wife says the same thing. It's a waste. But I love to have a real tree, and that's my tradition. Hi, there's my wife. She loves and wants a fake tree, and I keep telling her, no, no. And yesterday I asked my daughters, hey, you want a real tree or a fake tree? And they said, thank you. Both of my daughters said, a real tree, and I said, yes, I love you. I'm not giving you up for adoption, not today. So, a real tree. But sometimes with the rush, we're busy, things can get ugly. Some people are really busy, and they're, they don't have time for shopping, and then they're off on the 24th, 23rd, and they go and do their Christmas shopping and everything's out, and oh, they have to order on Amazon, but then it's, it takes two days, you know, Prime, you're like, oh, it's plenty of days, and oh, it's delayed a week, and then you're cranky, and ah, you're shopping for food, and they're, it's busy, and you're cranky, and there's some Karens out there that complain and are rude and are mean. I want to talk to your manager. People are grouchy, angry. Trees. This year, we bought our tree early. Early this year. Last year, we bought it, I think, three weeks before Christmas. And the trees are ugly, and, you know, they're, there are not many left. This year, we had plenty of trees to pick from. We're happy. But some people who wait till the last minute, or even maybe someone loses their family, and there's quarrels within the family. I don't want to visit this family because my sister's going to be there, my cousin's going to be there, my aunt's going to be there, or, or your loved ones who's passed away. And I know that's hard when you lose a family member during the holiday season. And there may be ugly thoughts there. Why, God, why did you take them from me? But those are normal human thoughts, and they do happen. Maybe you lost your job. So many different things pop up. A to Z, really. There's a, if you had a book, there'd be plenty to read about the ugly things and thoughts that we could have during the holiday season. Here's a list of four things I want to focus on. We can have ugly thoughts. Today, that's today's focus. We can have ugly words. We can have ugly motives. And we can have ugly actions. Attitudes are included in that. I've noticed this year when I was shopping and ordering, money is a little bit tight. And why is that? Prices have gone up. That's ridiculous, right? Gas has gone up. Food has gone up. Electricity has gone up. Rent. Our property insurance just went up. 
property tax has gone up. Ugh. Yeah, fake sales where they're trying to say it's cheaper, but it's really not. Or even people are borrowing money to be able to afford things. Buying gifts for my family or do I help someone out? And that's a hard place to be in, right? Feeling a little selfish about money. It happens. The war in Israel right now, it's a little concerning. But I know that it's a promise that God has for us, and I'm, I'm not w worried, but I do grieve the people that are there. And I'm concerned about the people here in America and all the quarrels and fights, and I support this side, I'm on this side, I hate this side, and all the rebellion. I say basically, I want the innocent protected. They have a right to defend themselves, and of course I want, you know, not to hurt the innocent because I care about all lives. I want the war to stop. I do. I pray for the war to stop. I pray for both sides to be saved and spared. But, of course, the enemy will be eradicated. And it's a tough thing to be in the middle of it, right? We're going to focus on thoughts. The thing we must do is focus on Jesus. Jesus gives us hope. We have to remember to make this a priority in our minds. In the midst of everything that goes on, that Jesus has given us hope. And the hope is what? Eternal life. We talked about that last week, right? We had a series about God's timing. God's with us every day. God spends time with you, all of us. He gives us hope. Earth is not a pretty place, and I know that, but we have to make the best of what we have. Thank God for what he's given us. He's given us this and these tools, and we are to use them to remember that he has given us hope and to share that hope with others. You all already know about the hope, and that's great. But now let's apply it to our lives every day. We're guilty of that ourselves sometimes. We get frustrated, we're cranky, we're crabby, and we have to trust in God. I've preached to her many times to trust in God. No, really, it's the opposite. I'll be honest. She tells me, she's like, hey, just trust God. And thank God for her to be there to remind me. And sometimes you remind me as well. Trust in him. And that's right. God will take care of everything. And things do pop up. But in the midst of that, we have to be able to trust him. Someone asked me, if you had a time machine, what would you do? And I kiddingly said, I'm going to go to the future. Actually, I'm going to go to the past and tell myself to buy cryptocurrency so I could be rich. People say, oh, but you're the pastor. You don't want to meet Jesus? No, why not? I have faith that one day I will. But those who believe without seeing, that's, they're blessed. And I want to keep my faith in Jesus. I know that he's there. Do I need to see him? No. The Bible already tells me his story. And I live that by faith. And people are shocked by that. Yes, I depend on faith. My future, I depend on faith. My wife depends on faith. My children, I teach them to depend on faith. All of us have that. We need to be able to share that hope with others, especially during the Christmas season. Now, here's the first verse. First Peter one chapter three or chapter one verse three through four. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into the inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. Wow. He has given you a gift of hope that cannot perish. That cannot be taken away. Wow. On earth, we lose our things. We do lose. But this gift that is given to us cannot be taken away. It can't spoil. Like an apple that spoils in a week. His gift of mercy endures forever for you. Wow. We have to be able to remember that when we have our ugly thoughts. Basically, this year, I'm going to tell you, don't be an ugly sweater this year. Inside. Now, on the outside, we want our actions and our thoughts on the inside to not be ugly. And sometimes we do get angry. I get angry. Do you get angry? Yeah, we're the same. The Bible says, be be angry. Did you know the Bible says be angry? I know you're saying, wait a minute. Yes, it ties into be angry, but do not sin. The Bible says that. Don't prolong that anger into the next day and the next day. Jesus was angry a few times in the Bible. You can read about it, but he didn't sin. One time he did flip the table, but the point was, was to say, whoa, and take a stand back. And he got a whip, and he told people to get out. You may stub your toe when you open the door, or maybe someone flips you off when you're driving. And maybe you're flipping someone off while you're driving. What's wrong with you? Today, oof, there are idiot drivers out there. Just the other day, I accidentally gave clo- got close to someone's car, and they got angry at me. I could see it, and it was Liz Beth, but she didn't flip me off. Sometimes I get close to her, and she's like, hey, I can't get out when we're parking. But, of course, she doesn't get mad. She just rolls her <laughs> eyes and says, come on. But sometimes when I park and I get to my car and someone's parked so close to me or they parked in the middle of the spaces, and I'm like, why would you do that? Okay, that's an ugly thought. Don't say that. Now, our minds, it's a battlefield. Our ugly thoughts are happening. Rage. Right. It's not from God. Read the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Angry thoughts are not in there. Self-control is on there. Peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. Beautiful thoughts. Faithfulness. And that's not easy. You're right. But the thing about God is he says to take control of your thoughts. And I struggle with some thoughts myself. And God says, stop. Let me take care of it. And that's hard to be able to submit and trust in God. And wow, your life changes when you do that. When you're able to let go and just give it to God. Give him your ugly thoughts. Focus on the good. The positive. Or do something to be able to solve it. Sometimes it takes actions to be able to solve them. Sometimes we have, you know, it's out of our hands and we can't do anything about it. I want to give you three things that we can do about it. 
we can rewire our mind, our thoughts. Through Jesus Christ. Before I accepted Jesus Christ, my thoughts were all on, word, on worldly things. I, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, I, did I become perfect? Nope. Spiritually through Jesus Christ, yes, but my flesh was not perfect. I struggled. I had to sacrifice and submit to God, and he was able to mold me and shape me. Now, the Bible is over there. The Bible sa- tells me how to live. And I say, oh, that doesn't match. I want this. Oh, I don't want that. I want this. Can you get my Bible? Oh, can you? Oh, yeah, it's right there. I want this. From the Bible, those ugly thoughts, take them out. Let's keep putting in more of God. And it's still a work in progress, I'll tell you. Because we continue to grow. I do have something to share. How many of you, looking back at your parents or grandparents, they asked you to fix the Christmas lights and the wires? And do you remember what you had to do to be able to fix them? When the Christmas lights go out, what do you do to fix them? My parents always ask me to fix them. And you look at the lights on the string, and you look at, you plug it in, and you each one, okay, not this one. This one's out. Okay, that's the one I need to replace. And what color is that? Okay. Let me put the new bulb in, and that doesn't work. Let me put another bulb in. And when I'm young, I'm like, it doesn't work. My grandpa says, look at the color. Look at the the whatever. Don't get frustrated. Take your time. Oh, it it turns, and you have to get in just right. And years and years go by, and every year, you know, you build on that, and you learn. And sometimes maybe you haven't done that. So what about fixing your car? Do you know how to fix your car? When there's a fuse, the fuse box under the hood, When you open your hood, you know, there's F1, F2, all the different letters and number combinations. And then when something goes out or the screen goes out and you go to the auto, you know, shop and you're saying, hey, can you fix this? And the man looks and he goes, oh, or maybe your family members taught you, okay, this one here has to do with this and this is burnt out. You just need a new fuse. And a new one is silver and black, it shows that it's burnt out and so you find the right fuse and you put it back in there same thing with our minds when we try to to match what jesus is and and we're not able to do it we're like oh wait here we go now we're connected we want to be like him we have to seek him and and here's a perfect example you all have phones right do you sleep with your phone on your bed and you're looking for it and you're trying to find the plug from your nightstand, you're like, okay, perfect, right? You're trying to reach that plug. You have to find it. Oh, that's not a good concept. you got to have the long wire and have an extension cord there, and you could plug it in. Yeah, because I lose my patience when I'm trying to do that. Anyway, Scott, you know Scott back there? Can you see me? Yeah. He is excellent at wiring electricity and fixing things. When I touch that, mm mm-mm. I just asked Scott, remember that? You switched the fan wires. I'll figure that out. That's a, Scott was gone. That's why there was a problem. I figured it out. Now, the same concept with God. We have to let him work in our minds. We're, we have to say, God, oh, this is how we rewire and follow him. When we try to do it all ourselves, we're not going to be successful. We have to depend on God. In the same way, I depend on Scott to fix things here at the church. He is an expert. And God, he is even more of an expert more than Scott. We can depend on God to fix us and rewire us. But the thing is, is you have to go to him. You have to read the word of God. Oh, God doesn't speak to me. Well, are you reading your Bible? Oh, well, you don't hear his voice? Sign it to yourself. Speak the words of God. You have to be able to rewire and get rid of things that don't belong to God. And the people who stay obsessed on the past or on their old lifestyle, they're stuck. 
They refuse to let God rewire and take things out. You won't grow. The first verse, the second verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 through 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. So now he's repeating it twice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, what do you do? By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'm going to hold on to verse 8. God says what? To rejoice. Not just one time, but he tells us twice. Rejoice. That's what we have to do in our minds to rewire ourselves when situations appear in our lives. And we should be rejoicing that God will take care of it, that we could trust in him and that ne- turn that negativity and make it a cross, make it positive. The cross that Jesus carried is negative. But he made a way by dying on the cross to give you hope, love. God says, don't be anxious. And I'm anxious with my thoughts about my future, about my finances, my children. But we have to trust in him and be with him. Paul, he wrote this. Obviously, he was speaking to someone who was anxious and maybe with uneasy feelings. And he said, rejoice. The Lord says this. This is a letter that he wrote. This letter is from God for you, too. Rejoice. Rejoice. Paul is writing this with a promise. When you do this, your mind will start to be able to understand. When you're having these uneasy feelings and you give them to God, you're able to understand because he takes care of it and he will guide you. And then you're able to rejoice. Now verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Take the negativity, turn it around, and think about some good things. Things that are lovely, things that are excellent, things that are right, things that are pure. Think about those things. Get rid of the negativity. Some of us are negative. Some of us know people who are negative. And you're saying, finish, relax, get rid of that negativity, be positive. Yeah. Sometimes it takes encouragement. Being deaf during Christmas time, we need those thoughts. Be positive. Keep on going. Inflation's going up. Great. Let's be positive. What's the positive thoughts that you can think of? Thank you, Jesus, for what he's done for us. Thank you, God, for that I'm able to buy a few things for my family. Thank you, God, for my family and my home. But with our mind, we have to have a mindset for one thing. Have a one-track mind. On who? On God.
don't live foolishly in the world and with God, Satan, and with God, and live in both worlds. God doesn't like that. The problem with some people is they're here and they're playing in the world, and then they, they say, God, I love you. I love the world. I love God. And that's a problem that some people do have. They need to let it go. The negativity, the positivity, the negativity, the positivity. And they're uneasy, and your health will suffer. The stress, your blood pressure will go up. I just went to the doctor recently, and my blood pressure was perfect. Whew. But my cholesterol, not so much. That's a different story. I need to eat a little healthier. However, I'm positive about it. I'm going to go to the gym. I'll eat healthier. I'm already getting there to be at the pre-diabetic level, I'll tell you. And that's how bad it is. But I'm still positive. Because if I die, I'm going to have it. No. I know, yes, that's true. But I want to take care of myself. My wife is pushing me to go to the gym. My kids are pushing me to go to the gym. She's going to cook me some healthier food. Today at the OC Winterfest, it's a lot of walking. That's good for me to get the exercise. The sweater's hot, so I'll probably sweat. I'll probably lose two pounds in sweat alone. Maybe more like five pounds, but, huh. However, the point is, is that we have to keep our thoughts on him. Love God with all your soul, mind, body, heart, strength. Love him with everything you've got. A one-track mind for God. Stay connected. Don't be positive and negative. Positive. Focus on that positive. Be positive. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. They were scared. Think about it. They were scared. How many of you guys have experienced fear before? Many times. When a spider is crawling down the wall, oof, I get scared. My wife, she looks about, she grabs it, and she's like, oh, it's so cute. And I'm like, oof. Whatever scares you, whatever fear you have. Angels say, don't be afraid. I have brought you good news that the cause of great joy for all people today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The angels are telling them this. I'm sending you Jesus Christ. Life is tough and I know it. There's no hope. But don't be afraid because you have a gift, a free gift of life. Wow. That gift can give great joy. Knowing that on earth, you know, 42 years of my life has been tough, good times, bad times, you keep going. But knowing the time that I die, that I can be with Jesus, I can have hope. And life is, you know, not very kind always, but I'm positive with Jesus Christ on my side. And we just keep watch for the Messiah, and one day he will come again. Will I die first? Will he return first? I don't know, but I stay watch and we stay positive. The third thing is we cannot forget. The problem is, is we forget communion. We do it to remind us of what he's done for us. We say, oh, 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 right, I'm cranky. My wife will say, oh, you know, you need to read the fruits of the spirit again. Yes. Okay, thank you for the reminder. WWJD, do you remember that? What would Jesus do? 
right? Before, right, right, right. What would Jesus do? Don't forget God is there. We need reminders. And why is there an elephant here? Elephants have one of the best memories. Did you know that? They can remember everything. Yes, scientists. That's good. I was going to tell that story. They remember when someone hurts them. Yes, there was a baby elephant. And a man was picking on it and abusing it and, and cursing at it and beating it up. And then finally it was rescued. And years go by. The elephant grows up in a zoo. It turns into a big adult elephant. That man who beat up th that elephant 20 years later showed up at the zoo and saw this scar, you know, that looks like that baby elephant. Mm, no, nah, can't be. And oh, the elephant remembered. The elephant saw him and took a tree and threw it and killed the man. The elephant remembered. Yeah, some the opposite, right? The positive stories. Let's talk about that. Where a man who takes care of the animal, you know, and, and deals with it and then goes away for many years and then they're reunited at the safari. Is that the elephant that I saved? And the elephant runs and they're like, ah! And the elephant wraps him with the trunk and embraces him. There's stories like that too. Elephants have good memories and we need to be like an elephant. Well, just to remember God. Remember, there was a movie, what was that, about the gorilla? I can't remember the story. Um, there was a gorilla that starts with a K. Anyway, the lady rescued the monkey when it was a baby. The mom had died, and she took care of it year after year. And then she had to leave because she had to take care of her family. And she leaves this gorilla. And, you know, the gorilla really cared about her. She cared about it. But she left. 20, 30 years later, she was getting old and wrinkly. And she was saying, oh, they probably won't remember me. And she came. And the gorilla saw the lady. And she happened to show up and ran to her and hugged her. Because they were able to remember. Even though she looked old, they were able to figure out. You know, it was the same person. And they remembered her by her voice and her smell. Right. Elephants in the same way probably remember the voice too. Being able to recognize that. And some people today are friends who are Christians. Maybe they're obsessed over something. And you're like, are you going to forgive? No, I'm not going to forgive. And they continue. But, like, they should forgive it. It's it's hard sometimes that we need to be able to forgive and show love whatever scars that we have. When someone's hurt us, it doesn't matter. We need to be able to move on and forget and forgive and give it to God and let him take care of it. And some of us still have that inside and maybe we've gotten rid of it. I remember in 2005, May 15th, she burned my dinner and I'm still mad at her for that. No, no, no. I've probably forgotten about that. But yes, there are some people who obsess on the negativity. When I say this ties in to the positivity, let's rejoice in the Lord. Having a one-track mind on him only. Get rid of the negativity and remember him, what he's done for us, the hope that he gives us. Second, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel. It's your gospel, too. You have to remind people that he rose from the dead. He gives you hope. A future full of hope. 
the problem is, is that we have an enemy. Our mind. The battlefield in our mind. Our flesh. Our spirit are in war with each other. Funny that you say Joyce Meyer. I have a quote from her. Yes. The Battlefield of the Mind book written by Joyce Myers. I have a, a quote from that. Our mind is constantly in a battle every day. And we have to get up in the morning and say what? Praise God. First and foremost, my mind is on you alone. And the negativity I choose to get rid of today is positive. And I remember what you've done for me and what you've done for us. And that's what we need to continue to remember. We just talked about Joyce Myers. You may have some major strongholds in your life that need to be broken. Let me encourage you by saying God is on your side. There is a war going on. And your mind is the battlefield. But the good news is that God is fighting on your side. Every day. God isn't saying, oh, you know, I have a minute to fight with you and I got to move on. He's with you every day in the military. You know, watch your 12. What is that? Watch your six, actually. I'm going to watch your six. Someone's got your back every day. And really, he doesn't just have that. He's got... 360 degrees around you. He's with you every day, everywhere. But what do we have to do? We have to conquer our mind through Jesus Christ. We have to conquer our ugly thoughts through Jesus Christ. When they appear, you have to say, God, can you help me? You have to pray. Hey, to a friend, can you pray for me? Sometimes a hug helps and sometimes we don't want them. Psalm 103, verse 2. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I feel like God made that in ASL, right to us. Forget not. Don't forget his benefits. God has given us so much, more than we deserve. Wow. He is given freely. And the problem is, is we do forget sometimes. God has given us so many gifts. But you have to think about it and remember that. Thank you, God, for my home and my car and my job and my family, my friends. And most importantly, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Think about him. Joy does not precede gratitude. Gratitude precedes joy. So you have to, precede means before, right? People say, I must have joy and then I can be grateful or thankful. But that's not how it works. You have to be grateful and thankful and then you, you have joy. And that's hard, I know. Yeah. Yeah. He first loved us. If he said, first you have to love me and then I'll love you. No, it says he first loved us before, while you were sinners. God's ready to love you. But you, you know, the tough times, you can thank him for that, for everything he's given you. Thank you for Jesus Christ. And if you appreciate what you have, rather, well, regardless if it's small or big or things are going awry, you can have joy. You know, if you're focusing on what you want, no, you should focus on what you have. Be grateful for that. Here's the last one. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. I have to tell you. Don't be a Grinch this year. Don't have those ugly thoughts. 
Bah humbug. I know someone who's very negative about Christmas. Such a Grinch. And that's tough, but you have to continue to be positive. I'm encouraging you to have a good have good thoughts. Take those ugly thoughts and throw them out. Rejoice with him. Keep your thoughts on a one track to him. Don't forget what he's done for us. No one likes a Grinch or Scrooge. Being cranky and crabby, complaining, and you're like, oh, okay. We celebrate Christmas and we can rejoice because of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. What did he do? He came to earth from heaven, a, p- a perfect place to love us before we love him. People who f- crucified him, said he said, forgive them for they don't know what they've done. He loved them before they even loved him. So ugly sweaters mean that we need to get rid of our ugly thoughts. Be positive. And next week we'll focus on other ugly things that pop up, and then we'll continue. All right, I want to close in prayer right now, and then we will partake in communion. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you, God, for the blessings that you pour out upon us and loving us before we love you. We know that in this Christmas season and we're in a rush and we're busy and money's tight, money inflation's gone up and there's conflicts with family and friends and those emotions are at a high and our finances and the war and all these things going on around us. Help us with our ugly thoughts to be able to put them aside and give them to you to transform them into positivity. Get rid of the negativity. Rewire our brains to fill them with the word of God. Help us to read the word of God, to fill our minds with goodness rather than the other garbage. Lord, we thank you for your precious word. We praise you, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do we have a song for communion? Scott, can you put on the song? Ushers, come on up.